What's up, everyone? Welcome back. It's Inside the Force. Dave Cottingham here with Hannah Burr. How are you doing tonight, Hannah? I am doing well, and how are you? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, I feel like I feel like we haven't talked in a while. Did we do a show last week? I can't remember. We didn't. We didn't. Oh, we didn't. That's right, because you, you were busy last week. Yeah, we were doing uh, shoots to the wee hours in the morning, and then I had a flight to catch. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So it actually has been a couple of weeks, so we apologize for that, but we are here gearing up for the Acolyte, which is here in two weeks. That's insane. Yes, two weeks. Two episodes will debut on June the 4th, which again, reminder, it is a Tuesday. So it's still no official word, but I, I'm assuming this thing's going to drop a certain time on Tuesday evening, you know, like Ahsoka did, but nothing fully, uh, fully released yet about that. So we'll talk a little bit more about the Acolyte, but a couple news things to get into of course, thanks to our patrons, as always, for continuing the support. We really, really, really do appreciate that. Go to patreon.com slash inside the force if you want to check out our tiers. So, Hannah, you recently went to back. I don't say recently went to. You went back to Disney. Yeah. Uh, and... A little bit, uh, I think we may have mentioned this on here one time, just randomly on on a news section, that they were updating Star Tours. Yes, we did. So can you confirm that that update has happened? I, yes, can indeed confirm that it did happen. And I have pictures to prove it. (laughs) Nice. Okay. So uh, So for those of you that have not ridden Star Tours... It is uh, it uh, pretty much the first Star Wars ride I think that was created uh, years ago in Disneyland I believe, and it's one of those rides where it's it's an it's, it's in a confined area. It's not like a roller coaster or anything like that. You get into a a uh, transport and. You get it's 3D glasses and you have the screens and it's all 3D and there's hydraulics and all on the mm-hmm. so it's so honestly I th- I felt to me in a way it's one of those rides that's very prone to motion sickness type rides. It is right. Did you ever ride? Um, I think it's at Universal the 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 old Back to the Future where you got into yeah. the DeLorean. Okay. Oh, absolutely. So that's what it's like, right? It's like you get into that and you get the 3D glasses. And I'm telling you what, I got sick. I got sick like crazy on that that ride. Oh no! So, so Star Tours, when I first rode it back in 2015, when I went to Disney World and took the kids, you know, Star Tours was the only Star Wars thing there. So I was like, I'm getting on this thing, and I got on this thing. And the first time I got off, I'm like, it. I tell you what, though, it it's it's just long enough to where I can, or just short enough to where I can make it, like. Any long, like 10 seconds more, I'd be like probably throwing up all over the place. So here's my question to you. Mm-hmm. When when you first rode Star Tours. Yes. Was it with the format where you have some beginning C-3PO is. Yes. Okay. So that's not the original Star Tours. No, correct. You're right. Yes. Yeah. The original Star Tours featured an android named Rex. Correct. And Star Tours was just about you going on this tourism thing. There was no variety. It was the same ride every single time. Correct. In fact, You're right. that Android Rex is in Oga's Cantina. Yeah, he's the DJ now. Yes. He's awesome. So uh, the reason why I tell the story is, uh, I don't know if I told you this before, Dave, but I'm pretty sure I'm one of the reasons why in Disney, if you've ever been to Disney, they added the yellow straps on their uh, seatbelts. Yes, you did say that. You yeah. did mention that on here. Yes. Because Star Tours <laughs> was the ride. My first mm-hmm. time on Star Tours, I fell out of my seatbelt when it first right. went. Right. So 
it when it tilted down. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think I, I I will say I do prefer Star Tours now versus what it was because I think it's a way to advance and as we can discuss, it's a way to constantly update it. And I feel like because it's outside of Batu, it's truly a chance to explore other timelines versus right. this time that you're stuck in in, in Batu. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it, it, it always kind of I was always kind of wondering whether or not they'd somehow move it into Galaxy's Edge, but there it shouldn't be there, so Mm-mm. it's fine. But so what uh what new scenes did you experience? So, uh, when we I wrote it twice. And uh the first time I actually literally squealed like a little girl because in the middle you normally get uh, you get Lando or you get Leia or uh, somebody like that who's saying uh, you have a spy upon your ship. We need them. Send them to this location. And it was Andor. Mm-hmm. That was the nice. first one I got. And I, I literally squealed. Yeah. <laughs> to the point that my sister looked at me like, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. And then the scene after that we all of a sudden were in the sky with a bunch of space whales and it was Ahsoka flying and we had to help her defeat two spaceships that were chasing her. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was the first time. The second time we got Ahsoka as that middle hologram bit. And then we jumped to the space whales again. So I talked to my sister who, you know, she works for Disney. So she's been to Disney multiple times. And she said that that's typically the scene I get whenever I ride the ride. So I was like, okay, maybe they're just doing this to solidify it. But the middle section, she actually got Mando the first time she tried the new Star Tours. Mm -hmm. So those are the three new middle holograms. And then typically you will end with the Space Wells and Ahsoka. Now I assume in a little bit, that's going to just kind of join the mixture of everything else you could end the ride with. Right. But that's what it is for now. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They've, they've done a good job. You know they've got they've definitely done a good job. I feel like of updating that ride mm-hmm. recently. You know, with all this new content that's coming out. You know, when I when I got there in 2015, there was you know there's still a bunch of scenarios that were that were possible. You know, and like you said, kind of the, how the ride works is uh, uh, normally there's like two scenarios, right? Two places that get you visit. You know, you you have your launch part where you're you know. Um, oh, oh! I'm I'm sorry. So I yeah. I totally forgot. There's a new launch part. Oh, really? Okay. So okay. there's one launch part where stormtroopers stop you, and they're like, "Oh, we're looking for this rebel spy," and they pick, randomly pick someone on the ship who's the uh, the rebel spy. Uh, and yes. when that happens, if you look in the back, you'll see the Millennium Falcon, and you'll see Han Solo trying to you know charm the stormtroopers. Well, the second time we wrote it. I was like, oh, this is similar. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, that's not the Millennium Falcon. Hmm. Wait, that's not Han Solo. It was Ahsoka. Oh, okay. So basically the second time I rode the ride, it was Ahsoka, Ahsoka, Ahsoka. Yeah, okay. With Hawk in the middle there. So the launching point, there is an additional scene where you could get Ahsoka trying to persuade the stormtroopers. And then she hops on her ship. She literally force jumps with her two sabers. It is <laughs> so cool. Yeah, that's neat. That's neat. Sorry. Yeah, so they do have a tendency. They do have a tendency of of jumping timelines within those two scenes sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, which throughout, throughout the ride you will jump. You might get um, the first planet you might visit might be in the sequels, and then the holograms, the original series, and then the last one is the prequels. Like you right. just don't know. Yeah, it's 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 not a it's not a canon thing that you should be worried about. It's just a, a exciting ride to to see the different locales and and get the different scenarios. So. Yeah, I think 
think it's a fun ride. I haven't. I actually haven't ridden it um, the past couple of times we've been, just because it's it's you know it's hard to get. It's one of the things where we you can do it because the lines usually at the end of the night are really low, and you can kind of just do it instead of work, waiting in line because it's one of those ones I wouldn't w- really wait in line too long for, but you know genie it or get there later and and just hop on so but it's a quick ride it's easy to get on and off and and get back on it's pretty neat it's it is pretty neat how they do it so great new scenario so i'm gonna i might check that out when i go next uh next month so yeah are you all gonna visit the park before you go on your cruise yeah, actually, we're going to visit the park before and after. What? Oh, because I didn't tell you this. No. So we are, uh, this is a side note, everybody. Sorry, it's a Disney talk. Uh, we are, so me and Brooke are D23 gold members. Right. And they have a D23 event for the opening of Tiana. Oh, on on June twenty second, which is the Saturday after we get off the ship. That's right. You mentioned that in uh, sharing the mouse, which highly recommend. If you're not listening to sharing the mouse, please uh, <laughs> tune into their podcast, sharing the mouse. Uh, the mouse. It's with the lovely uh, Brooke and David. Uh, shameless yeah. plug. Continue. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Yes, my wife. We, I, I probably don't say enough. My wife is a a Disney travel agent mm-hmm. uh, well, well travel agent but she specializes in disney and and so we we are you know gold members which is like a you know you pay like a f- annual fee you you get like the um the week the quarterly magazines and you there's all these events that you can do but the problem is is most of these events are at they're in california or right you know there are different places that aren't here, right? So it's hard. So it, it took me a while to actually join. I actually just joined last year because uh, I was just questioning, you know, it wasn't really worth it. But I went ahead and did it because I know Brooke wanted, like, the merchandise that they give you for being a member, blah, blah, blah. Right. And you can take – so at these events, you can qualify to buy a ticket to these events and then bring one guest. So it works out that we each can bring our daughters. Right. Well – so Tiana, this June twenty second thing popped up, and you had to join the queue in order to get get a ticket. Right. And it was just like it's just like kind of any random virtual queue. You you have to get on right when the time starts, and you get in line basically, and then you know. You, so she got tickets. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say we both got it. Oh. Uh, no, I was I was sitting in a restaurant with a friend of mine from from high school, and you know, literally, I had an alarm for like two minutes till, and so I was like, "Sorry, dude, hold on," and I got on there. This is important, man. Just yeah, hold on a second. And, this is very important. She was at school, and she got it and got on, and I I was sitting in the queue for, in, in line for like twenty minutes, but by the time my line came up, the oh. tickets were gone. Uh, so it just comes down to luck at that point. It, no, I, I think it's completely random. Like they put you in random order. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a combination of. Well, that's what I mean by luck. It's, yes, it's you total just luck. have to click it at the right time to be put in that random group to make it. But see, that's the thing. There wasn't a button to even click. Are you serious? No. So you had to you had to sign in right. So to oh. qu- verify you're a gold member. So as long as you were on the page, you had to be on the page. When the countdown went to zero, it automatically just puts you in the queue. Oh my! So it is purely luck. So it's purely oh. random. Yeah. Wow. So she got it. I didn't. So anyway, so of course my daughter Liza is like, "Well, I'm going. What's it's me? <laughs> what's Sam and Daddy gonna do?" So, so we we were planning on coming home on the 21st when we got off the ship. Right. But now we are going to, uh, we're going to stay, go, we are going to, we found a really, we were staying to, c- to keep the cost low. Right. We're staying at, for the first time, we're staying at All-Star Movies. Gotta say though, All-Star is, is very underrated. 
Yeah. Well, well plus they just refurbished a bunch of the rooms yep. and stuff like that. So it looks, it looks really cool. So, you know, and a lot of her clients stay there. So we want to make sure we understand what it looks like in the layout. So we're going to stay there and go to Typhoon Lagoon. On okay. The, Cause we've never done a water park. <gasps> You've never done. No. Typhoon Lagoon is great. Yeah. It's great. So we were going to go there in 2020, but pandemic canceled that trip. So now we're going to go. And then the next day, the 22nd, we're going to do the parks. And then they're going to go to the event <laughs> while me and Sam go do something else. Oh. In fact, actually, I'll tell you what Sam's going to do, what she wants oh. to do, which is I'm surprised that she wants to do this. Uh, you can do, you can apparently do photo sessions, like, you know, pay for like an hour to do a photo. Have you heard this before? I don't know. Yes. You can pay Disney to do the, the individual photo sessions where it's just you, like no one. So we're thinking about it. I might, I, I got to see how much it is, but cause we just threw it out there. It, my, my wife was like, what if, you know, when we're at Tiana, you can go, if you want to bring like something to change into and we can do photos at like the Falcon galaxy's edge. So she wants to bring, like kind of wear, and I don't think you're allowed to, I think you know the answer to this. You're not allowed to dress like any of the characters, right? It's, it's very Lucy. It's Lucy goosey for kids. It's more correct. so for adults. Adult yeah, adults can't. Correct. It has to be more of an inspiration, but she's, She's considered a Disney adult, right? She's 14. So, yeah, I think so. Because, so. because what she was thinking about doing, she's like, Well, can I dress like Ahsoka and take pictures and start in Galaxy's Edge? Because she has the whole, she was Halloween. She was, she, we bought the whole outfit, the head. And I'm like, I don't, I bet you that she will not be allowed to do that. If you want, I can look into it because I think she could as long as she didn't paint herself orange. Okay. Okay, but she but but she would want to put the white you know, right. her marks. I'll I'll look into that for you. That would be great. That would be great because I have connections. I, I was telling Brooke, I was like, I'm telling you, if she's walking around like she did in Halloween, like kids would be wanting to take pictures with her, and kids would freak out because she's got the sabers and everything. You know what I mean? She's like, yeah, she's, and, and that's what Disney people want to try to avoid. Like when they did Star Wars weekends. Forever. Well, it wasn't forever ago, but when they did that, I remember going and there's there was this one guy who cosplayed as Anakin. Yes. Like down to the contacts. Like he was absolutely he and I actually became pretty good friends. Um, Disney actually had to ask him to stop signing autographs and to yeah, stop taking no, pictures it, with totally. People. Yeah, I totally get it. You know. I mean, just think about it. If someone walked in there like with a Chewbacca outfit or something like that. I mean, you just can't yeah. do that, you know. So uh, so yeah, so she's, we may do something, obviously if she can't do that, then we'll just go do something else. But, uh, I just, I just shot a question to my contact and, uh, great. Thank I you. I should be able to get you something soon. So anyway, Brooke and Eliza will be riding Tiana's Bayou adventure Ooh. a week before it comes out, which is pretty cool. And they, and for it, the events, three hours, six thirty, nine thirty. And it's only right there around the, the area. You know, they got live music going, jazz music going on. They've got drinks and stuff like that. But they can ride the ride as many times as they want in that three hours. So uh, is she allowed to record it? I don't know yet. I don't oh! know. I, we, 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 I haven't seen any details yet about that. So Because I'm not we'll going to lie. I absolutely loved when she live streamed Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I loved that. I know. I think that was great. And uh and I I mean the way the Tiana ride the, the animatronics on it looked phenomenal. Holy smokes. If you haven't had a chance to see them, look them up. Yes. Yes. Whoa. Well, and you're I'm sure your sister's gonna be able to ride it right soon if they um, haven't already. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say whether or not she can, but I can say yeah. this. She's waiting to be told when she can. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I figured they'd have yeah, they'd have like a cast thing sooner or later. Probably. But. I think though I don't know. I feel like it probably depends on what park you work in. If you work in a park, they might have other people mm. test it out because they have to yeah. work it. 
So right. it might be they only allow cast members. Like, I actually genuinely do not know this. Maybe they only allow cast members who are working the ride. Oh, gotcha. ride it. But gotcha. I don't know. So anyway, sidebar. Thanks, everybody, for listening to our Disney talk. Uh, even though, Hey, Disney is Star Wars. Star Wars is Disney. You I was know, about to say, so they go, they're one in the same. It's one in the same. But um, I'm excited to get back there. And we're, yeah, we're, so we're going to, so this, this turned into a, a week trip versus just like a four-day trip. So That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. So now you can ride Star Tours as many times as you want to get as That's many right. of the combinations that you can get. That's right. That's right. So yeah, we're doing a lot of doing a lot of first that week. You know, the the, the cruise, the water park. They're, they're going to ride Tiana's. You know, so it's going to be it's going to be a fun trip. It's going to be a incredible trip. Okay, a um, couple of quick news things before we talk about the acolyte. One is there apparently has been some products that have been teased for the skeleton crew which shows an image, you know, you know, on artwork, on products, they have images. So there's an image apparently of the kids that are going to be in this series. It looks like there's two females, looks like there's a male and there's an alien that kind of looks like, um, almost like a young Max Rebo type, uh, character, but. Oh, wow. Have you seen this? You yeah, seen I'm it? looking yeah. at it right now. So looks like there's going to be four kids in the sh- in the show, and and of course we know that Jude Law is in in the show as well. Yep. So again, surprise, you know, I'm not surprised that we're not seeing anything yet of this. Well, I think we have to get through the acolyte first before we see anything, and then there's definitely some time. There's going to be about three or four months between shows. Yep. But there there is going to there's some leaked stuff right there that's that's coming out. So. I'm still convinced we're going to have an older Omega. I, mm. I'm still, I'm still hoping for that. I, I, I think that's true, but I, I, I'm still, I'm still thinking it's Rogue Squadron that's going, that's going to have Omega. Okay, in it. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll see. Um, something that it's funny because I saw this on, I believe I saw this on Twitter, which I wasn't going to chalk it up to anything real but the article seemed pretty 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 real and but i haven't seen it on any other sites so i don't know how real this is but anyway the article that i saw was that there in fact is you i think you'll actually like this a lot Uh oh there in fact is in development a star wars show based on knights of the old republic Thank you. <laughs> so. Thank you. God, thank you. Yes. I don't, uh, I don't have any other details besides that. So I don't know how real this is. Um, but, you know, it, it makes sense. I, I, to me, honestly, it makes sense that they're at least developing it. At least they're looking into, you know, how they would do this. And maybe it's they're waiting to see how that game comes out. True. Because they could be like, okay, are we doing this on the origins of X, Y, and Z? Or are we doing it more on Darth Bane? Are we, yes. what are we doing? So it could be they have a bunch of ideas in mind. And you know what? A Darth Bane TV series would be the bomb. And I feel like that's the only way you could really tell his story. Right. I agree. So maybe that's what they're hinting at. Yeah, and, and you know, of course, Knights of the Old Republic, the video game, you know, takes place a certain time period. They may not honor that, so their mm-hmm. Knights of the Old Republic, like you said, could be around the Darth Bane era. It could be. It could be. I feel like. Well, I, I feel like the Darth Bane area it follows right at the tail. I feel like the Darth Bane era, especially that one choice he makes, and I won't spoil it for anybody. But that one choice he makes, I feel like, ends the era of the Old Republic, at least in the extended universe. You're talking about Revan? No, I'm talking about Bane. The talking about Bane. Two. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying the end of Bane's story. Well, not the end of it, but the end of the the book about Darth Bane. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like that's kind of the end of the old Republic. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's probably right because that's when the Sith are pretty much wiped out. They're, they're, they are wiped out, except for him and the young lady he chose as his apprentice, and that's when Correct. he started the Rule of Two. Right. Spoilers: If you haven't read the book by now, sorry, but read the book; it's still yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, once again, that's not canon. But right. I feel like if you were to make a canon, that would be a great way to end the era of the old. Because he still, even with that plan, he still wiped out a good chunk of the Jedi as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I feel like if you're going to end the old Republic era, that's a good way to end it. It is. Yeah, I, and and I think it makes sense if you're going to do modifications to this game like it sounds like they're doing maybe they're trying to do maybe they're trying to do you know a tie-in make them kind of work together which would make sense right you would have the game and then you would have a show to kind of either continue the game or be a side thing for the game you know so maybe i don't know i just i don't i i hope they don't change too much to the game because the game itself is just brilliant well, I, I feel like they're, they I feel like it's changing. Oh, uh, it, it, they can't change the major thing. They just can't. And if they yeah, do, well, I mean, I think, I think they're making it canon, obviously, but okay, good. You know, uh, how much how much close it's going to be to the original game? Yeah, it's that's going to be hard to say. We'll see. Uh, okay, so Knights of the Republic. So possibly, you know, we'll see where that goes. I, I just I do want that game badly yes. hopefully that hopefully that game comes out here soon i feel like we've been talking about this game for the last decade <laughs> yes i agree oh it actually reminds me you know this gap that we're gonna have between shows yeah because so acolyte will be done in july and we're probably not going to get skeletal crew to sometime in late november possibly uh-huh so that's what one two three four months Yes. Well, in August, Outlaws comes out. So we'll have a couple months to play Outlaws. <laughs> That's so perfect. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. You could, we can just sit there and get drown, drown in Star Wars gaming for a few months before, and not even feel like there's a gap between these shows. <laughs> so anyway, I forgot about that. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's see. Uh, real quick on the release schedule. Of course, Temptation of the Force is your next novel from the High Republic. It is June 11th. Tears of the Nameless is September 24th. The Glass Abyss, October 15th. And then uh, Star Wars 46 on the comic side of things came out this past May 22nd. So... Go check that out. That one is coming. It seems like I think it's coming to an end here on its 50th issue. Mace Windu last week, which was number four, I think that ended. So there, there is a little bit slow on the comic shelves lately, but I think there's a bunch of stuff in the works for coming out this summer. So keep, uh, keep going to your comic stores and getting those stories. We are just a, Quick update on us. We're going to be doing another Behind, uh, Beyond the Saga tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So look for that next week. And then I guess we might as well talk about our commentary, our next commentary. Long time in the making. Yeah. So we are on to Solo, which I'm excited about because I have not done a commentary for this. Yes. And we are talking about doing that this Saturday, which would be May 24th? No, 5th. 5th. May 25th. Saturday, May 25th. And we're talking about doing it again sometime in the morning. Mm-hmm. So we can get uh, our patrons on as much as we can. You know, we got one over on the uh, on the European side. Mm-hmm. That should be mid afternoon, so hopefully you're not too busy there out there, Thrawn, to to jump on. Uh, and then we got a couple other 
master patrons here in the States that we can try to hopefully get them on. So anyway, yeah, we're going to try to do that Saturday morning. I, uh, I'll, I'll put it on Patreon what time we're going to go, but probably going to be sometime 8, 8.30, maybe 9 o'clock, something like that, some, somewhere that we can knock it out in the morning and everybody can uh, enjoy Hopefully us watching and talking about solo and hear your comments as we go. Because again, as I haven't talked about solo before to anybody, you know, while watching, which I think is always going to be, it's going to be interesting to get into that. And it's, and it's, and it's weird because it's, it's also, you know, we just came off the prequels Yes, where, you know, that's a big contained story. And this is, a side this is a side story it's not part of the skywalker saga so we're dropping in this thing and just kind of isolating our conversations based on this one film and there's a lot to talk about as far as should they even made this movie you know and things like that so yeah how are you excited about doing that oh yes i do yeah. cuz you like solo right you're you're a fan of solo i'm a huge uh minus the first 10 ish minutes. I'm a huge fan of solo. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Interesting conversation. We'll have the first 10 minutes then. Uh, it, it's very <laughs> obvious. It was directed by two different people. Yes. Well, true. Yes. That's so. all right. So let's talk about the acolyte here for a little bit. Yes. Because a couple weeks ago, I feel like, look, I'm not I'm definitely not going to sit here and say like, <laughs> I hit this right out of the park or whatever, but it seems yeah, you like it. you guessed it. It seems like this whole twin concept is starting to take shape. You were right. Now it's the, the show's right. not out yet. So we don't know, but I'm fairly certain you were right in your prediction. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe I was right. But what, so what do you think about that now? Do you think that it was, do you think it's too, do you think that's unfortunate that it's been revealed? I don't know because it could have been a misdirect. Like the thing is this, is that I feel like part of me is like, okay, it could be a flub because, you know, there was that intern that went viral on uh, Twitter and social media who was an intern for NBC Universal, Universal and they sent out, this is a test email and they meant to send it to everybody internal of NBC Universal. Uh, but they accidentally sent it to all of the subscribers of Peacock. I think I haven't heard that. What was that? What happened? Or was it was it that or was it Max? It was some it was some major streaming company. There was an intern who meant to send a test email to the internal company and they accidentally sent it to every subscriber. Okay. And so then the parent company, and I think it was NBC Universal, but I could be a million percent wrong. Um, they sent out a tweet saying, hey, sorry, that was our intern. Honest mistake, disregard. And then everybody started responding saying, hey, don't feel bad. When I was an intern, this is what I did. And like everybody started revealing their own mistakes. <laughs> Like, and on, it's the most wholesome thing ever because everyone's like, don't, don't beat yourself up over it. I've done something worse. Like it, right, right. It's, it's a great moment. And once again, it might not be NBC Universal. If it's not, that's my bad. Um, but anyway, so it could be something like that where there was a huge accidental leak in the names in the mm. in the uh, mm -hmm. subtitles, or it could be Disney overthinking it and using it as a misdirection. Yes, yeah. right. Because if you think, like, I, I will always go back to the, um, I think it was the, in, it was either the Endgame or Infinity War trailer where there was one shot where you saw Captain America running and you see the Hulk running behind him. And that's nowhere in the movie whatsoever. Yes. So every time I think of that, I'm like, okay, Disney could do a misdirection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it could be it could be somebody did a, it was a mistake, but they're choosing not to bring light to it in hopes that people don't realize it. But then they're kind of insulting the intelligence of their audience. So either we are dealing with the twin situation or we're dealing with the misdirection. 
Right. So we're dealing with somebody who's truly two faced or maybe somebody who's being controlled by somebody else without knowing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then again, I'm an overthinker. So, well, I think we always overthink these things. <laughs> I, and sometimes we just have to rem- remember, say it with me, everyone, Maroc is just Maroc. Just Maroc. That's right. <laughs> I, and, and I'm with you. I think the, the thing about it for me is, you know, if I just watched this most recent TV spot that they put out there and it's revealing that basically there's another, this, this, uh, actress Amanda that's uh, playing May Mm -hmm. you know this other character looks like her obviously it she's played it seems like it's played by her again and if I had just seen this TV spot I'd probably be on the side of thinking that okay this is like a dual personality kind of thing or or she's good and then got turned, you know, to the dark side or something, you know, but it, but probably the same person, but to be honest, I'm telling you what, what doesn't sit well with me and, and convinces me that it's the twin is the poster. Yep. Like you can't put two people on there if they're not two people. Right. I mean, the only other reason that would make sense if you were to make it make sense is if we saw a flashback. Or, or that, yes, you're right. Like that's, that's the only other other yeah. thing that would make sense. So maybe we are dealing with twins. And maybe we're dealing with a flashback. Or maybe we are dealing with twins, and maybe the story is because we know that, not that the Jedi took children, but they recruited them. The parents gave them over willingly. The parents right. can always say no, mm-hmm. but most of the time they're like, yes, please. So it could be. She had a twin, but she showed a stronger side of the force than her twin did. Yes. And so it's a path of jealousy for the twin because yeah. the twin, based on what we've seen, does have force abilities, but they're clearly not as strong to wield a lightsaber. Hmm. But that's also not saying you, you don't necessarily, well, I take that back based on the extended universe. <laughs> You don't need force powers to wield a lightsaber. Right. Jason Solo totally wields a lightsaber without channeling the force. And while he says it is more difficult, extremely more difficult, it is possible. So it could just be that's what it is. You have twins. One was set off to become a Jedi. The other was jealous. And it's a revenge plot. And then the other is like, Oh my gosh, wait, I actually have a twin because they were taken when they were an infant. So they wouldn't remember that they were a twin. Right. Right. I don't know. There's so, I feel like some people on social media are saying this reveals a lot, but at the same time, I'm like, this just poses more questions. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. 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 But you know, like, like we just said, I think, we overthink a lot of it. And I think, I think the story is going to be in a nutshell, there's going to be some twists, but I think the story in a nutshell is going to be pretty linear and pretty simple. Yeah, I agree. You know, here, basically what I'm just, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, master soul, I think who is saying in these spots that, you know, I trained her when she was a kid, I should be the one to go after her. Obviously I believe that that's this may character, Mm-hmm. The one that's evil and has the the face mask, but as his investigation goes on, he comes across this this other woman that looks exactly like, and that's how the huh. the twin is discovered. Mm. And that's kind of to me that's the simplest way to do it. You know, you you track down this person that looks like the the one killing the Jedi, and that's why in that spot she's saying, "I didn't do it; it wasn't me." You know, and then you so I part of me is feeling like they don't know they're twins. Yeah. That would you know make I mean? sense. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm going right now with that. But, but, um, but I'm excited, you know, this is, um, this is going to be a whole new era for star Wars. There's uh, I will, I, w- I want to say, I want to mention this though. There was a, there was a interview that, 
um, Leslie Heelan, the the uh, showrunner, did, and I had it brought up, but I closed it out. Sorry. Let's see. Um, she says a little bit of a. Uh, of course, I lost it. Oh, here it is. The influences. So it was pretty neat. I thought you'd like this because we were just we were actually just talking about Darth Bane, right? Right. So here she says she explained how she first came up with the concept of uh, Amanda. Amanda, sorry, I said I called her Amanda before. It's it's Amanda uh, Stenberg's May. She said the character May was rooted in a very early idea I had even before we had her character, which was. Do the Jedi have a monopoly on the Force? Or are there Force users that exist in the galaxy who are either dealt with or disposed of? Or do they have to keep themselves hidden? Are they good guys or bad guys? Well, well, where does that put the Wayseekers? I don't know. I guess, I don't know if there are way, I guess there's Wayseekers at this point. I don't know. We don't, I don't. I don't know. There, there were in the High Republic. Sure, yeah, but it'd be interesting because at some point we don't, we never heard of them in the prequels. So at some yeah, point, there, I don't know huh. if, you know, I don't know what what comes of them. Um, here's the thing too: is she she goes on to explain how she came up with the concept behind the series and where the idea of introducing the Sith 100 years before they reappeared in the Phantom Menace. And she says there are certain things that happened in the prequels about the Sith and about Darth Maul and the Jedi's understanding of them. What I found intriguing, Qui-Gon on Tatooine immediately knows that Darth Maul is a Sith from fighting him and then reports to the Jedi Council. Yoda knows about the rule of two. He says there's always a master and an apprentice. So while they're considering, while they're considered extinct, there was a little bit of knowledge about the Sith that I felt would not have come from ancient history. To me, it felt like to know that information that quickly, it would have had to have been in the last 100 years. So that's apparently the concept of why or that the, that some of them aren't that surprised to see the Sith come, re, kind of reemerge in the Phantom Menace. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This show cannot come any sooner. I totally agree. And then let's see another quote that she says is, is, is there going to be a mention of Darth Bane who we're just talking about? Okay. And she says, I really toyed with utilizing Darth Bane or mentioning Bane. We do not do it in the first season. But it is obviously the legacy of these practitioners of the dark side. While we don't get into that particular lore, there are some things in Legends that I wanted to drag out because I felt that they were really interesting. Not only to the storyline, but to myself as a fan. So I thought, well, I'd love to do that. So I'm not as familiar, hardly, unless, you know, little stuff that I've read here. I'm not really familiar with legends, Sith lore, and the history of it. All I know really is in the history of kind of the Old Republic storylines, Darth Bane storyline. Right. But anything beyond that, I'm not going to pick up on. So all this is going to be pretty new to me. I'd when like. It comes out. While we have Darth Bane, while we have whatever we get in the Old Republic games, I'm not. Or not to the Old Republic games. I'm not aware of anything else that really gives us any Sith lore. Right. When she says that, I immediately go, holy smokes, if we have twins, are we going to do a Jason and Jaina dyad connection? Like, it's not really technically a dyad, but are we going to do a twin connection like that? Because that is such Mm -hmm. a powerful connection. It's absolutely insane. Right. Like to the point where Jaina gets into a crash and Jason all of a sudden is convulsing on the ground in pain because his twin sister 
got into a crash. Yeah. Mm. So is are we going to get that deep? That's possible. I think that's possible. If these characters are that, yeah, that linked, yes. Wow. Another quick side note says that the series is set up as a mystery thriller and is already raising a lot of questions in the trailers. One of the most intriguing one is the masked villain who Heathlin said was partially inspired by a character from Knights of the Old Republic 2, Darth Treya. But that is to the extent of it now, and viewers will have to learn the rest of the story once the Acolyte starts streaming on June 4th. You can't just leave it at that! <laughs> so, so you know who Darth Trey is, I'm assuming. Yes! Okay, okay. Okay, I, I need time to digest that. Um, Okay. That's well, a lot to think yeah, about. You can, yeah, you can, we don't have to talk about it now. We talk about, we can save something for next week at least. I, I can't talk about it now. I gotta like, okay, yeah, think out about what it. This means. Think about that. So, anyway, that is, yeah, I think uh, the bottom line is we're both super excited for the Acolyte. Yep. Can't wait for this two night, two or two episode premiere. Uh, Leslie Heelan, the, showrunner i just saw it too that she has directed the first two episodes okay so this is her baby this is her story she's gonna get a chance to shine and i think it's uh it's already off to a incredible start with the amount of interest uh, it's surrounding the series right now indeed so everybody get on uh, the comments and let us know what you think and how excited you are for the Acolyte. Um, a couple comments from a couple weeks ago here. One, you know, uh, Corey and I did a dark knowledge and mm -hmm. we had talked about Acolytes in general. Like what is an Acolyte? What does it even mean? How is it going to be relevant to the show? Uh, let's see, Thrawn, on that episode said a uh, great discussion love these dark knowledge episodes and taking a deep dive into the lore this is the, the great thing with these acolyte series it's a time period we haven't really seen before and we know so little about it and i'm so excited what they do with the sith and the acolyte in the show it will be interesting because i know how phantom menace they say sith hasn't been around for a thousand years so don't know if they will find a clever way to make it fit with the canon or they will just ignore it would love to see Plagueis brought into canon, but do wonder if they would completely change him or change certain things like they did with Thrawn from Legends to Canon. Hmm. Lastly, yes, you need to read Plagueis. I'm not a big Legends reader, but this one is so worth it. Really clever how it leads into the Phantom Menace. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. You know, the... the this thing about the thousand years and whether or not they are going to change that. I, I don't think they're going to change it. I think, you know, I mean, you got to think about it. Most of the Jedi, most, I would say most, because most of them are human or humanoid. Most of them aren't alive at this time period that we see in the Phantom Menace. So it could just be a, a generational thing, right? Yeah. Yep. And then Darth SNL mentions on that show, he says, Saw episode one Tuesday, the Acolyte. Saw episode one Tuesday. The Acolyte special look was sweet. The show is good. Going to be so good. I love the bits of the High Republic in it. Looking forward to seeing a few characters. I have been reading about Dark Side gets both days, fifth and sixth. <laughs> Because we talked about that on there, yeah. Yeah. Yes, read Plagueis. It's so good. But Rise of the Red Blade first. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna pause Thrawn and and probably just jump over to that. So you need you need to finish it. You need to finish it because like. Uh, that's okay. Lot, okay. Right? I, it's getting good. I'm 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 still in it right Especially now. Especially uh, now since you finished Barris's story. Oh, Tales okay. of the Empire, you need to finish Rise of the Red Blade. Oh. Frankly, 
know how easy Barris got off. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So, Darth S and M. What I don't know what you mean by Salt Episode One Tuesday. Oh, Salt Episode One, Phantom Menace Episode. Yeah. One. Okay, that's cool. Because I, I was that kind of at first. I was like. Episode one of the Acolyte? Wait a minute. Did you see the... Ep- no, okay. Do you have some secret code we don't yeah, know Yeah, episode one of the Phantom Mass. Great, great, great. Loved it. And then, of course, on our episode, our last episode, uh, JoJo says, so excited for the Acolyte. Tales of the Empire was amazing. Never would have guessed Barris would turn back to the light after attacking the Jedi Temple and then becoming right? a... Yeah, totally. And then becoming an Inquisitor, but it shows how everybody can change for the better. And then Thrawn says, was a bit underwhelmed with Tales of the Empire. Was still enjoyable, but feel like the Morgan episodes, we didn't learn anything new and mm-hmm. was just filling in gaps, which really we should have seen in the actual Ahsoka series. Mm-hmm. Love seeing my boy Thrawn, but was surprised to find out he just blatantly stole Morgan's idea for the TIE Fighter program. Yeah. Yeah. It was also uh, awesome to see Grievous, even though his appearance was short. Barris' story is more interesting, but at the same time, I feel like there are too many Inquisitors now, and I felt a, a bit similar to Reva's story, and they turned good at the end. I think Barris survives, so we will be inter- it will be interesting to see where she pops up next. Classic Star Wars now that another person survives a lightsaber stabbing. <laughs> Overall, enjoyed it and looked beautiful to watch, but would have preferred tales of... Any Republic era, bounty hunters, Sith, or even just another Tales of the Jedi. Acolyte trailer was great and I like that we still don't know a lot and don't want to see anything else until it comes out. Want to be spoiler free and be surprised without more fan theories from trailers. Thanks again to you both and looking forward to becoming for the upcoming solo commentary. So going to what you said about Tales of the Empire. Um I, I do agree with you on a lot of things. Uh, Morgan's story, I do agree. Um, I just feel like it was very weak compared to Barris's. I do understand the whole idea of a great another Inquisitor, because that is what I thought, too. I was like, ugh, another Inquisitor? How many Inquisitors are there? But when you read Rise of the Red Blade, <laughs> it kind of justifies it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, in the fact that there were actually more inquisitors than you think, they just didn't pass all the tests. Yeah. Um, so I kind of went past that. I do agree with you though. in the fact of suddenly everybody survives death, I, I do understand that I will not be mad if we don't see Barris again. I, I like to think that Barris did die at the end of tales of the empire. Yeah, I kind of think she did too, to be honest. I think she did. And yeah. I think that's the perfect ending for her, and we don't need to think about it furthermore. I'm right. already still trying to come to terms with the Saj's resurrection. Right. Yeah, true. So I, I like to think we don't see Barris again because that was her story, and her story has been told and we're good to go. Yeah, and, and I agree with Thrawn too, is that it is it is very surprising that, at least to me, that they they kind of gave her a redemption story based on what she actually did in the Clone Wars, which was, wasn't, you know, wasn't a misdemeanor. I mean, she, <laughs> like she, she did some major damage and... Uh, she did, but you know I'm a sucker for a good redemption story. I know, I know, but I, I feel like Barris. Well, and again, this is because it's my wish and stuff like right, that. So right, it doesn't right, really, right. But, but for me, the Barris' story was the Inquisitor. I thought the Inquisitor's side of it was interesting to me, and again, I think we all wanted to see her fighting Ahsoka again. Oh, yes, absolutely. So that's the route I wish they would have went. So anyway. I mean, I, I wish the story was she fought Ahsoka and then Ahsoka showed her mercy. And that's what made yeah, that's I think that would have been a great story. Yes. Absolutely. 
Uh, Theron also adds, he says, thanks for answering my Clone Wars question, aging question. I got so confused with it. To be fair, I never think of the clones in Episode 2 or Clone Wars as being in their 20s. Mm. They look like they are more in their 30s. Also didn't know a, their age doubled. So 10 years in, is like 20 years to them. Good to know. Yeah, that's pretty much what yeah. that means. So, And also, if you see people who go to war, if they've seen stuff, they just naturally age faster. It's the very same that you see, for at least for the United States. You have a picture of the president when he starts in office and yes. when he ends in office. Yeah. He ages at least a decade yeah. physically. He just does. And I have to imagine that if you're in war like these clones and you see the crap that they see and experience, you're going to naturally age. That just yeah. happens. Yep. Yeah. And you also got to think, too, you know, you've got to be, at least in the States, you know, you got to be at least 18 to obviously enlist. Yep. And usually, if you enlist and we go to war, you know, you got a bunch of young kids out there in their 20s, you know, fighting this war, very much similar yep. to what these clones did. Well, also Wars. just just because of the cost of education, a lot of people are signing up for the army so that the army can pay for their education. So they absolutely. don't have to deal with those loans. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. So even though, yeah, I think, I think, I think Tamora Morrison obviously wasn't in his twenties when he did the Phantom Menace, but, or, um, I'm oh, sorry, attack of the clones, but you know, um, yeah, that's, it makes that's, sense. that's the way it basically they double, they, they aged, twice as fast basically well also the thing is too if and dave you know this because you're in the the industry as well when it comes to casting like a lot of times when you watch especially movies from the 90s and you watch these high schoolers nowadays you're like they're clearly not in high school those are full-fledged adults but because yeah. you cast it a certain way the viewer is going to believe that they're high schoolers but they didn't cast yeah. high schoolers. They casted adults who could pass as a high schooler in some alternate universe in some cases. Yes. Because, you know, child labor laws, especially mm -hmm. child acting labor laws. That's right. That's so right. I wonder if that played a part in it as well. Definitely could have for sure. Definitely could have. All right. Uh yeah, like you said, when we started, it's like we always try, seem to stretch these out. Yeah, you, right before we began, you're like, yeah, we'll talk about this and this, and yeah, it's going to be a short episode. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not going to be a short episode. <laughs> I know. It's, we always got something to talk about, Star Wars. And thanks, everybody, for sticking with us and listening, uh, even though we kind of went on a Disney rant there for a second. But thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Of course, again, to our patrons that, you know, are well engaged and, and talking to us and supporting us. So we really appreciate it. That's why we, we want to do these commentaries to have you guys involved. So be on the lookout this week on Patreon. I'll um, mention what time we're going to get going and, and send you a link on there as well to get uh, into the conversation and watch it with us. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to doing that. So please join us. Yes, yes. Thanks, Hannah, for hanging out. Thanks, Dave, for hanging out. Of course. Always a pleasure. I think we've got so much Star Wars coming up. Acolyte's going to be incredible to talk about. So so after, you know, next next week we'll, we'll do our show where we kind of give our expectations, you know, talk about our expectations a little bit of what, we want to get out of the show and what we feel like it's going to do to the, to the impact of star Wars and the timeline before we, uh, enjoy watching the first two episodes. It's going to be, mm -hmm. it's going to be quite, quite incredible. So. Indeed. All right. Take care, Hannah. We'll see you next week. Take care, Dave. See you next week. Thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Take care. May the force be with you. <laughs>